Hello, Morton Middle School friends. Uh, this is Lori at Cut and Paste Craft Studio, and I want to give you a quick um, tips video on how to paint the projects that you've uh, bought in order to support your school. Um, I'm going to use this example to show you the painting tips, though I know uh, some of you have bought other items, uh, but the same tips apply to all the different shapes that you could use. Um, I won't take up too much of your time, so, uh, but I do want you to know a few of the things that are important to note. Um, first off, you want to have your paints out. You've got your paints um, in little cups like this. Uh, I'm going to have mine in a paint palette, um, but yours, yours will be, um, you can leave them in the little paint cups to do it. You're also going to want uh, some sort of paper towels. You're going to want a bowl of water and the paint brushes that I have supplied you. Now, you're not all gonna have these four paint brushes. Um, I chose paint brushes to go with whatever project you were doing, um, but um, there are different sizes. Um, I would choose the size that makes you feel most comfortable. In other words, don't be using this big fat one if you have it to paint little tiny designs like that. You're gonna wanna switch to a smaller paint brush like something like this to do little designs. Um, if you have a black marker, you could do some of the design with a black marker. Um, and um, But switch around to whatever brush makes you feel comfortable. Now, the key with painting is you don't want to fill your brush up completely. Now, if you're painting the great big pumpkin and you want to get the whole thing orange really fast, Sure, you can take a big old scoop of paint and just brush it on nice, big, long, smooth strokes. But if you're working on this project with um, uh, where you're going to be doing some very small spaces, you want to tip that, uh, put that paintbrush in maybe only about a third of the way. Can you see that? And then you're just going to keep adding more paint as you go along. But if you put a great big scoop on there and then, for example, start painting the eye, you're going to have way too much paint on that brush. You're going to have a great big clump. Great big plump clumps don't dry very nicely. So always start with the right size brush with the right amount of paint. Now you'll notice I did not put that brush in the water to start with. We don't put our brushes in the water. Um, this is acrylic paint. It doesn't need water. We only use that water when we want to change colors. And then it's really critical that you dry that brush after you wash it out. Um, also, uh, something I should have told you to start with, you might want to wear an old shirt. Uh, do not wear, you know, super long sleeves of your favorite Nike jacket that you don't want to get paint on because acrylic paint does not wash out of clothing. It will wash out of your hands and your hair and things like that, but it won't come out of clothing. Uh, it should scrub off your tabletop if you're not using a table covering. Um, but uh, just take some care. Um, and if you've got a scrunchie on your wrist, make sure you take that off. Um, let's see, what else do I need to tell you to start with? Um, oh, if you have a blow dryer nearby, that's always helpful. For example, if you're painting something over here and then you start working here and you need to lay your wrist down, you don't want to be laying it in um, a wet, into wet paint. Um, also, it makes it easier, like if you have just finished all the red and you want to do the black, you're not going to be smearing it if you've already dried the red up. Um, they'll, they'll dry at different times. You can tell if it takes too long to dry, you're clumping the paint on way too thick. So I'm going to start out by doing a couple of things. Um, if you're doing the big letter or if you're doing the pumpkin, um, you don't need to be doing these super fine details, but the principles are still all the same. Um, one of the first things I did, the design um, that you see on this, on Sally here, um, did not come with this second eye, and to me it looked really odd. So I took a pencil and I sketched in where I wanted the second eye to go. I started at this top hump here and just kind of brought this around and covered up that whole weird little shape there. I, I think maybe it's supposed to be her... Um, uh, eye, something like that. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to be the hair hanging over her eye, but I didn't particularly care for that, so I sketched it in myself, and then you can put a little black spot there in the middle for um, the dot in her eye. But you can do all of that um, if you want to. Otherwise, you could have the hair hanging over her face if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and start showing you um, some of the techniques for painting. 
I'm going to start on this one. I'm using a small brush, but again, the principles are the same whether you're using a large brush uh, or a medium brush or a small brush. Some of you will have a pointed brush too. Um, that is a little bit different. Um, when you have a medium brush like this, a small brush like this, any of these that have a flat edge, use that flat edge for your flat lines. So for example, I am lining that brush up with the edge of the line and I'm pulling it away and that gives me a nice smooth line there. Now, if you're going to paint the outer edge black, black covers just about any color. So if you want to, you can paint really quickly. You don't have to worry too much about those edges because you're just going to go over them with black. And I think you can see that that line still shows up um, underneath the white paint. So if you want to make it fast, uh, that's an easy way to do it and just brush that paint out smooth. Now, white will normally take two coats. Do not paint a coat and then immediately paint another coat over it. You need to either let it dry by going on to some other project or letting it sit while you go eat lunch, or you need to get your blow dryer out and dry that up. All right. That way you can get your two coats on. If you just paint a second coat of wet paint on top of paint that's not dry yet, you just end up mushing the paint around, and that is not something you want to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of other spots, um, and then um, while that white dries, and then I'll show you what I do for the black. Uh, with Sally's face here, and this goes for any of our shapes that have this etched line, um, if you're painting with this blue um, for her face, you can paint right over, for example, this line where her mouth is. And again, that laser etched line is going to show right up. And again, if you went, don't worry too much about going over the lines because that'll cover right back up. Now, I would not go right over the lines when I'm working with another color. For example, the red that's right next to this, don't put the blue over it because it will be tough to cover with red. Red seems like a darker color, but red is one of those sneaky colors that you think, oh, it's so dark, it'll cover up beautifully, and it really doesn't. Red is a bit sheer when it goes on. Now, I'm going to paint around this eye that I sketched, and you see how I'm not using a ton of paint? I'm spreading it out carefully, I'm using the flat edges of that brush to give me the design I want. Oh, I got a little something on there. Um, also, you do not want, you know, if you look at this and go, oh, it's not covering, you don't want to do this. You don't want to leave the big clumps of paint like that. Again, that does not dry. If you've got a clump, spread it out. If you've got so much paint on your brush like I do right now that it won't spread out, wipe your brush on, off on your paper towel and then go around and smooth that paint out. But again, I clump so much on there that it's gonna to be tough if I don't wipe off that brush. Now I'm gonna flip this over for a minute and just use the back side to talk to some of those of you who took, got the bigger projects. Like I said, if you're painting a pumpkin, um, you can use that big brush and you can take a good scoop full of paint you know, like that. That's way more paint than I would do if I were doing a little small project. But you're going to be covering up a lot of real estate here. So you want a fair amount of paint on that brush. But go around and smooth it out. Um, if you're doing a pumpkin, you may want to smooth your orange paint in the direction, you know, that a pumpkin might, uh, you know, the shape of a pumpkin. So kind of, you know, swirl to a couple of sides. And again, like that. And yeah, that went much faster than your pumpkin's going to go because obviously yours is bigger than that. But if you can see, I did really sheer smooth coat. I don't want heavy clumps. Um, you will see some brush strokes until it is completely dry. So again, if you decide, I need a second coat on that. Oh, now on this one, it's looking pretty good, so I'm not going to do it. But if you needed a second coat, do not start that right away. Um, you're going to want to... Um, let that good and get good and dry or blow dry it, one or the other. Um, the thicker the paint is, the tougher it is to work with it. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to go over? Um, 
Oh, there's a couple of techniques that you can do um, when you're working with something like this. Um, one of them is dry brushing. And you can pretty much dry brush with any brush you've got. You just want to make sure that brush is super dry. Get all my red paint off here. And you would normally wait until this is completely dry, but since I'm filming, I don't want to um, have you listen to me use my blow dryer. So I'm going to just um, do it right here. I'm going to add a little dry brushing to this black. You could add a little gold to your orange pumpkin, a little green to your blue letter, whatever it is you want to do. So I have a good clean brush here. And I'm going to dip just the tip of it in my black paint like that. And then I'm going to brush some of it off on the palette. And then I'm going to brush the rest of it off on my paper towel until I have this super light amount. This is called dry brushing. So you want a dry brush. Now, I'm going to, I'm not going to press down when I do this. I'm going to drag this across my shape. And if you were doing a pumpkin, again, you would follow the shape, the line that you want. Um, anything else, you can dry brush on anything. It just adds a little um, accent to it. So I am just going to lightly drag and see how I'm getting just a little bit of definition. I could turn my brush sideways and get a little sharp line like that. Let me see if I can get up closer for you. Can you see that? I've added just a little dimension and color to that. You can do that with any brush, but always, always wipe off almost all of the brush. If you find you're needing more paint and you've got to go back to your palette to get more paint, always dry it off first. And again, you can do a sharper line. You can hit the edge of your brush like this to bring some color in and that will give you a little dry brushing. Um, this is something fun to experiment with. You, If you don't like the look out of it, don't blow dry it and paint over it. Try to wipe it off first. It's unbelievable how much you can fix by getting a little, um, putting a little water on a paper towel and then just coming over here and wiping it off. Now, when you do that, you may find that you take some of your base color off. That's just fine. It is much easier to fix that base color than to paint over a color you've left on there. Um, if you have some Q-tips, Q-tips are fabulous for if you need to get a little detail work, uh, you know, fix a little something like that. Now, again, um, with the uh, cautioning you on um, putting too much paint on, it's going to be very tempting. For example, when you're painting an eye, um, I think you can probably see if I bring this up close, that white just does not cover completely. That's okay. Do not clump it on. Spread it out as thin and smooth as you can. Go blow dry it or leave it alone and move on to the next piece. Um, that way you've got a nice, um, you've got thin, smooth coats. You don't end up with big clumps on the edges. Now, this one has dried up here on uh, the white is dry, so I'm going to show you. Um, I'm using the small brush to put the black on. You can use uh, the, you know, the edge of that brush is smooth and straight, and so just bring it down along the side. Now, this is where you don't want to paint fast. Any detail work that you're going to do, you're going to want to do nice and slow. All right, so take it easy and see how that black just perfectly covers up the white. Now I got, I did get a little clump here, so I'm going to go back and smooth that out. Make sure you're working in a place where you've got good light. If you can't see what you're doing, that makes it difficult. Now, this is one of my favorite brushes, this very, very pointy brush. So one thing you can do, if, um, if you've just washed it and dried it and it's wet, you can take it between your fingers and twist it and you'll get a nice point. When it's brand new fresh like this, it'll have a nice point. You just touch the very tip of the paintbrush with paint, all right? And then that will give you the kind of control you need to paint the mouth. If you've got a black Sharpie, that can also be something you use. But the main key here is patience. That is usually the biggest cause of um, things you don't like on your painting. Is 
I want to show you one more technique before we go, and that is one of our favorites, using the wrong end of your paintbrush to make polka dots. It's also great for making eyes too, but I'm gonna show you one of my favorite techniques. If you wanna make a dot, you just dip your paintbrush straight into the paint and make a dot. If you want uh, a lot of dots, all the same size, you're gonna keep dipping in between each dot. If you would like your dots to get smaller as you go, dip once and then continue to make dots as they get smaller and smaller. This is also a great way uh, to fill in a small shape like this. Dip your paintbrush in the black, dip it in here, and then you can just kind of drag it up to fill in that nose. Um, you could also do it down here um, for Sally's eye. But I would do that after you paint it white. Don't do what I did and just put the dot on there right now. Uh, but you could do it on either side, and it gives a perfect little dot. That is all the techniques I have for you right now. Remember when you're done to wash up your brushes, empty out your water, throw away your paper towels, uh, clean everything up and you're going to make mom happy and maybe she'll let you do it again next time. Thanks so much for joining us and I hope we see you soon at Cut and Paste.